Hello you absolute legends. Do you think you have what it takes to spot a fake speedrun? Over the past one and a half years, I've covered some notorious speedrunners that have tried to pass off cheated runs as their own. All of them being foiled by some combination of stupidity, laziness, or ignorance. Once faked gameplay has been exposed and the evidence has been compiled for easy consumption, it's easy to sit back and exclaim that such a run would have never gotten by you. But how hard is it really to detect evidence of tampering? In this video, I'm going to show you two example speedruns from three games, GoldenEye, Super Mario Bros., and Doom. One will be real, and one will be fake. The test will be to see if you can spot the difference. This won't be easy though, so be prepared to have no idea which is which. If you don't want to spend the brain power trying to figure it out, that's fine too. This video will still be entertaining as I will give you the answers and break down exactly how each faked run was created. For those who want to take a deep dive into each example, I've put the raw video files and demo files in the description. I hope you enjoy. Now before we go on, this video is sponsored by Raycon. Now I have a confession to make, Despite the fact that I try to work out and exercise consistently, I still find it really hard to get the motivation. But one thing that really helps is making sure I have a good audiobook or podcast to listen to while I work out, and Raycons are perfect for this. Obviously when you exercise, you don't want to use wired earbuds which will get caught on everything, but other premium wireless earbuds cost hundreds of dollars. Raycons start at around half the price and sound just as amazing. Raycon just released the Everyday E25 earbuds, which is their best model yet, with six hours of playtime, seamless Bluetooth pairing, more bass, and a compact design that gives you a nice, noise-isolating fit. Raycon offer a 45-day money-back guarantee, so there is no reason not to try them out. You can get 15% off these bad boys today by going to buyraycon.com legend, or clicking the link in the description. When it comes to trying to cheat in GoldenEye 007, Frigate is by far the most notorious level. In the game's history, several of the top players have tried to pass off faked Frigate runs as legit, and this level in particular is one of the easiest to fake given how the objectives work. Speedrunning Frigate revolves around its first objective, rescue hostages. Scattered around the level are hostages that are being held captive. Killing the specific guard holding them at gunpoint will allow them to begin running to a randomly selected exit point. The problem that speedrunners face is that different exit points take differing amounts of time for the hostage to reach, which means that in order to get the fastest time, only a single exit point can be chosen. The result is a level that is heavily dependent on RNG, and requires lengthy grinds to get the luck you need. But this in of itself doesn't lend itself to faked runs, as when objectives complete in GoldenEye, a message shows up on screen. So if you don't get the luck needed, the hostages won't escape and the message won't appear. But unfortunately, it's not that simple, as the objective can still complete in the second or so after the level has finished. This period of time is called the fade-out for obvious reasons, and frigate speedruns at the top level are generally so optimized that the objective complete message never appears at all, because the objective completes during the fade-out. Visually, there is no discernible difference between a run where the hostages have escaped and one where they didn't. This gave speedrunners the bright idea of capturing a run that otherwise seemed legitimate, even if the hostages didn't escape, and splicing on a different end screen one that they had forged using a game shark to complete all of the objectives. The most famous example was a speedrunner by the name of Henning Blom, who spliced many runs. His frigate runs were eventually discovered to be fake, because the weapon Bond was holstering during the fadeout was different to the weapon that was equipped when he finished the level. The weapon should always be the same. Obviously, the end screen was taken from a different run. Audio analysis eventually made the splice very apparent, but it took years for the runs to be exposed. It's important to point out that the end cinema that is played after the level has ended will only play if all of the objectives have completed. Therefore, if any splicing is done, the ending cinema will have to be from a different run out of necessity. Objective A doesn't always complete in the fade-out though, and a minority of runs do show the objective complete message on screen, even if it's just for a frame. These runs are more trustworthy and raise far less questions. You are about to watch two runs that I performed on Frigate Agent. There are only two objectives here, Rescue Hostages and Plant Tracking Bug on Helicopter. The hostages are released first as you want to give them enough time to escape, followed by a throw of the tracker bug to the helicopter that's placed at the rear of the ship. Here are the runs.
If history teaches us anything about Frigate, it's that generally splices are caught by discrepancies in the fadeout or the end screen. This could be showing the incorrect weapon or even some incorrect statistics showing after the run. So we'd check those first, including the amount of shots fired, where the shots hit, and how many kills there were. Detecting a splice can also be done by analyzing the audio signal for any gaps or anomalies. I do think that as far as audio goes, it is possible to splice frigate runs without it showing any traces, but it's not what I did here. There is no splicing in these runs. The method of choice for faking this run was by using a game shark. Most game sharks will come with codes already programmed in, including one that completes all of the objectives for you. But these aren't usable here because the objective complete messages come up on screen as soon as you start the level. So a new code was created to complete the objective during the fadeout. There is one detail about the run that I had to ensure was present in the faked run, and that's a message that appears several seconds before the end confirming that one hostage had escaped. One of the two hostages escapes much earlier and has much better odds of escaping, so it's not hard to get a run where they do actually escape, but this message has to be in the run either way, otherwise it's definitely fake. The fact that we know one of the runs is fake, but both had Objective A on screen, makes the decision of what to focus on pretty easy. This message did not appear in the failed run, so I needed to extract it with Photoshop, and paste it into the video in Sony Vegas. While the Photoshopping was terrific, there was one small detail that I overlooked. The Objective Completed text in GoldenEye is outlined by a gradient that blends into the background. This means that if the text is placed in front of a green background, the gradient will blend from white to green. In both runs, the Objective Completed message appears over a blue background, but one of the messages had a grey outline. This is out of place, and happened because I grabbed the message from a different run where it appears over a grey background. Using this information, we can ascertain that the fake speedrun was indeed example number one. If I wanted to do a better job, I would recapture the message again when it appeared over water, so it blended in as it should. This color discrepancy is pretty inconspicuous though, and had the run have been submitted to the rankings, I don't think anyone would have ever noticed. The fact that Objective A appears on screen at all is enough to quell any doubt that the run is legit. Super Mario Bros. is a game that needs no introduction. It's one of the best-selling games of all time, and kicked off the highest-selling video game franchise in history. Even when it comes to speedruns of the game, it seems to be insanely popular, with New World Records finding their way into the news feeds of even the most casual gamers. But despite its popularity, many people are still relatively clueless about the subtleties of the game, and when a video of a speedrun goes viral, it is inevitably followed by an avalanche of accusations of cheating. There is nothing wrong with a bit of skepticism when viewing new records, but the reasons people use to justify their claims of foul play tend to be pretty misguided and uninformed. They will point to things like Mario seemingly passing through enemies or piranha plants without taking damage or dying. If you don't know anything about how the game works, this does seem strange, but it's definitely a byproduct of the way the game was designed and is in no way evidence of cheating or hacks. In order for a speedrun to be accepted onto the official rankings, it must be verified by at least one moderator, who is generally another speedrunner and an expert in the game. A scenario in which a casual viewer spots something that flew under the radar of a leading expert seems pretty unlikely. It's definitely possible for someone to find a way to fool other speedrunners, but odds are it would be something that is so subtle it would require very deep analysis to spot. If you don't know much about a game and something looks strange in a speedrun, it's probably just a gap in knowledge, rather than an attempt to deceive you. This isn't the case though when it comes to non-speedrunners trying to impress gullible audiences. Case in point, Butterbun, who probably fooled many people with their poorly edited stolen footage speedrun. Many people immediately knew that something was off about the run, but when it comes to outing cheats, you need solid evidence and you need to be able to explain why something isn't possible, down to the smallest details. Many things in speedrunning seem impossible or fake upon first viewing, but are actually very real and a result of thousands of hours of practice and an unhealthy understanding of a game's mechanics. You are about to watch two runs of the very first level. One is a legitimate speedrun, one is not. This time, the speedruns will be captured through a camera pointed at a TV, which is still an acceptable way to provide proof. This may or may not affect what options are available for someone looking to cheat. Good luck.
The most common way people try to cheat in Super Mario is to pre-program a run and play it back in an emulator. Using an emulator isn't specifically against the rules, however there are very strict requirements that are enforced in order to prevent such simple deception. Rules such as including the end of the previous attempt and showing the reset. Players using an emulator must also provide the input file, and if their runs are particularly good, they must stream all of their attempts. Unless you are very familiar with the game, it might be difficult to tell if you're watching a run played on an emulator, but the experts can definitely tell. The resolution and aspect ratio is different, but the difference is small and a casual viewer likely wouldn't know the difference. Both of these runs were played out on a real Nintendo console. An emulator wasn't used, and as such, everything shown was theoretically possible for a human to execute. Both runs look very similar, but it's the subtle differences that tend to give things away. The entire level is pretty straightforward, with the only difficult trick being at the very end, the flagpole glitch. This requires a very specific setup to do consistently, as it needs sub-pixel precision, which is something that a human just can't detect. If you look at the world record speedrun played by Cosmic, which shows his exact inputs on screen, you can see that there is a period of several frames before the final jump where he releases the B button. This is part of the setup in order to perform the glitch, and it causes a noticeable drop in forward speed for a very brief moment. In our example runs, example 1 clearly shows this momentary slowdown, while example 2 shows no slowdown at all. Both examples show a glitch that is perfectly normal in speedruns, but example 2 does it in a way that no human ever would, as you would never be able to replicate it in real speedrun attempts. This is the telltale sign that example 2 is the fake speedrun. Just because it was played on a real console does not exclude it from being a pre-programmed run. These days, you can buy hardware that can take runs constructed on a computer and replay them on a real console, which is what was done in this case. In the faked GoldenEye run, it was video analysis that gave it away. In the Mario example, it was unrealistic gameplay. The third example will be something else. Let's take a look. In March of last year, 4 Shock Blast beat a 20-year-old Doom record when he achieved 8 seconds on E1-M1. The video I made covering this event was my first ever to go viral. Every several months or so, I jokingly ask the Doom speedrunners to beat the record on the very first level of Doom 2. In 1998, Thomas Pilger achieved a time of 5 seconds on ultraviolet speed a record that has stood for 22 years. If it was beaten, it would make for a terrific video. The consensus at the moment is that a time of 4 seconds on ultraviolence isn't humanly possible. There just isn't enough time to reasonably save. But something pretty incredible happened in early May of this year. The Doom speedrunner known as Depravity achieved a time of 4.97 seconds in the No Monsters category, one frame below 5 seconds. If this were any other category, this would get far more attention and praise. Playing Doom without monsters just doesn't feel the same. But in terms of movement, this is seemingly the most precise Doom speedrun ever completed. It goes without saying that the run's short length makes it easier to get a perfect run, but still, the run is essentially flawless. You are about to see two runs of four seconds. One is legitimate, one is not. Good luck. Yeah. 
At the end of the run, just before the final button press, it appears as though depravity hits the door. Those familiar with Doom speedrunning might jump to the conclusion that this lost time, because normally, hitting the door would cause you to lose all of your momentum. But in this case, he uses a very, very, very precise trick called momentum preservation that allows him to keep his speed and saves a single frame. I'm going to be honest with you, unless you are a Doom expert, and unless you downloaded the demo files and knew exactly what to look for, you wouldn't have been able to identify which run was fake. Visually and strategically, these runs are basically identical. The run that was fake was example number 2. This run was originally a 5.09 that Depravity had achieved before getting 4, which he then edited frame by frame to fix up the time losses and create the perfect run. Because Depravity knows what is or isn't realistic, the execution of the faked run is indistinguishable from the real run. He never created any unrealistic inputs or techniques that a human wouldn't perform. However, even with this knowledge of strategy, it's still possible to detect that the demo had been edited. This secret is too dangerous to give away though, and recently there have been a few people that have tried to edit demos and pass them off as real, each getting caught and rightfully removed from the community. It would be a very, very difficult challenge to get a faked run past the Doom experts. The level at which they can analyze demos is really impressive. As time goes on and speedruns become more and more intricate and complex, it will become even more difficult for casual viewers to understand and by extension trust world record runs. But just know that they always require verification from moderators who know the games better than anyone. Generally, the top players are required to stream all of their attempts, both to prove their skill and minimize the chance of artificial manipulation. Streaming attempts is incredibly important to building credibility and may become mandatory for many games in the future. Ultimately, I think performances in live events will grow in value and perhaps one day will be the most legitimate form of speedrunning competition. A big shout out to Cosmic for providing the Mario examples, and also Depravity for the Doom ones. I will put a link to their channels in the description. Please go and show appreciation by subscribing to them. Thank you so much for watching, you legends. I hope you are having a fantastic day, and I will see you in the next video.